authority for the welfare of society and the just government of humanity, we beseech you to look upon with your abundant favors these your servants whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of such important trust in this land. Let your blessings descend upon them here assembled and grant that they may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under their deliberation in so just and faithful manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you have committed to their charge. Authority meeting convened by the Minister in charge of Kampala on 25th November 2013 in the authority chambers. The agenda national anthem, Buganda anthem, authority prayer, statement of Minister responsible for Kampala capital city on the report of the tribunal investigating the allegation against the Lord Mayor, deliberation by the authority councillors, resolution by authority. Closing remarks by the Minister responsible for Kampala. Confirmation and signing of the record of the meeting. And lastly, closing of the meeting. You move to adopt the agenda. Central 2, I beg to second the motion to adopt the agenda. Motion seconded. Item number four, statement of the Minister responsible for Kampala Capital City on the report of the tribal, tribunal investigating the allegations against the Lord Mayor. Honorable Minister. Thank you so much. I hope these recordings are recorded. I hereby ask the clerk to make sure that the recordings are recorded. In addition to the minutes you will take, I would want the recordings recorded. And the recordings will form part of your record. Your worship, the Lord Mayor, or any of your legal representatives present, the Honorable Lord Councillors of Kampala Capital City Authority and all of you invited guests, as well as the management of KCCS. I take the opportunity this morning to welcome you all to this special meeting of the authority. As you may all know, I received a report from the tribunal, which I had set up months back to investigate the allegations against the Lord Mayor of Kampala Capital City Authority on Thursday, 14th November. 2013. According, I'm compelled by Section 12 of the KCC Act to convene a meeting of the authority within 14 days after receipt of the, of the said report. Today's meeting, therefore, is in fulfillment of that legal requirement. The report of the tribunal was received in the open, like you also, just like its proceedings, proceedings had been. I forwarded the copies of the same report all of you, Honorable Councillors and the Lord Mayor, and you all confirm the receipt. While the law gives me 14 days to convene a meeting like this one, and also given the fact that I was at liberty to convene this meeting at any date and working day of my choice, including doing so immediately after the day of receipt of the tribunal report, I did not do so for justifiable reason. I gave all of you, Councillors, and the Lord Mayor, a period of one week to read this quite voluminous report, not in haste, but of course conscious, at the same time of the 14-day timeline set by the law. I also announced that this meeting would be called in the second week. This is what exactly happened. I issued a notice dated 21st November 2013, inviting the Lord Mayor and councillors for this meeting 
first one, section 4 of 17 of the KCR. It was therefore unfair to read and hear news commentaries from section insinuating that this meeting has been first tracked to defeat some agendas for some people, moreover known to me. If indeed I had intended to first track the meeting, I would have convened it a day or two after receipt of the tribunal report. Still, that would have been within 14 days. I wish therefore to advise all of you to respect this otherwise illegal process and avoid unnecessary and irresponsible politicking. Honorable members, allow me to address you on the genesis of the petition, the setting up of the tribunal, and the release of the report, including a summary of its findings and conclusions, as I am obliged to do this by law. The genesis of it started on, on 17th May 2013, when I received a petition from the authority councillors seeking for the removal of the Lord Mayor on grounds of misconduct, abuse of office, and incompetence. Past one, section 205 of the KC Act 2010, I evaluated the petition in consultation with the Attorney General through letters 20th May 2013 and 22nd May 2013, and I satisfied myself that there do exist grounds for constituting a tribunal to investigate the allegation. By a letter dated 31st May 2013, I consulted with the Chief Justice on the suitability of the person's pro pro proposal to constitute the tribunal. On the 4th June 2013, the Chief Justice gave a no objection to the constitution of the tribunal and the proposed members to sit on it. All of this was in fulfillment of the requirements for the process of the removal of the Lord Mayor or adopt the Lord Mayor under Section 4 of the KCC Act. On 5th June 2013, the tribunal was constituted with the following terms of reference. To determine its procedure, its rules for its own guidance, and the management of proceedings. To investigate the allegations against the Lord Mayor as contained in the petition. To determine whether this is a prima facie case for the removal of the Lord Mayor. Submit a report to the Minister responsible for Kampala. On the request of the Tribunal and for various justifiable reasons, including the disruption of Tribunal proceedings, court cases instituted against the Tribunal, volume of evidence and the need to ensure that all the evidence required was made available to the tribunal, I was compelled to extend the time within which the tribunal was to complete its work. It's important to emphasize and note that my decision to appoint the tribunal, as well as its legality, were all, were all challenged and successful in the High Court by the Lord Mayor. In most, if not all, judgments, the court agreed with my decision and concluded that it was within the law. All of these legal contests of members, though tedious and time-consuming, helped to put our action, as well as the integrity of the entire work of the tribunal, to full scrutiny, and eventually we were vindicated. I would like to thank Justice Bamugemere and her team for leading the tribunal in a highly professional manner and for having managed to steer clear of all deliberate orchestrated provocations that were aimed at dreading the process. The following, Honorable Councillors, is a summary of the tribunal findings that there were 12 particulars which were pleaded in the petition of the councillor and that the Lord Mayor was exonerated with regard to four particulars and was found culpable with regard to eight particulars as hereafter stated. All of these are in the report. I'm just making a summary. The four particulars on which the Lord Mayor was exonerated were that the Lord Mayor engaged in inciting the public in acts of violence resulting in the destruction of property engaging in insightful acts which cause the destruction of property, merchandise and merchandise and the death, what they call the activity of Gorda Kampara. That is, in, is on page 9 of the tribunal report. The tribunal could not attribute the failure to convene on an authority meeting solely to the incompetence of the Lord Mayor, although he did exhibit a measure of incompetence as the report notes. It concluded that a prima facie case had not been made out against the Lord Mayor for his failure to convene the meeting. See pages 125 to 126 of the report. The Lord Mayor was exonerated on the account of carrying out persistent attacks on the technical staff and using abusive language. It was the conclusion of the tribunal that this allegation had not been proved. See finding at page 18 of the report. In fact, the tribunal held thus, the evidence was weak and open to many interpretations. 
that the petition has failed to prove that the Lord Mayor disrupted court proceedings and aided the escape of prisoners. He was ignored on that account. See page 181 of the report. The particulars under which the Lord Mayor was found culpable include the following. Abuse of office. And the tribunal found that when the Lord Mayor chose to fight the assessment and payment of trading licenses within Kampala, he did so arbitrarily and an abuse of his office. Page 79 of the report. Appointment of and removal and recall of counselors in Makerere and Mulago Nursing School. The tribunal found that when the Lord Mayor singularly appointed and removed counselors from universities and tertiary institutions, he did so arbitrarily to the prejudice of KCC and in abuse of his office. See pages 96 to 97 of the report. Failure told special meetings. You can see that one on pages 111 to 112. On incompetence, you can find that on page 171. On misconduct, you can find that one on page 191. And in conclusion, Honorable Councillor, the tribunal stated it had distilled all the evidence presented before it and distinguished the matters that had been proved from those that had not been proved. Matters that were not proved had been clearly pointed out and the respondent were exonerated thereof. Similar allegations that were proved were also identified and evaluated against a high standard of proof. These are conclusions of the tribunal. Having carefully listened to the argument from both sides and considered all the evidence presented in respect of the grounds of the petition raised by the councillors, the tribunal established that there exists a prima facie case for the removal of the Lord Mayor from office. I would like therefore to inform you, Honorable Councillors, that under the KCC Act of 2010, you may decide to move a motion for a resolution to remove the Lord Mayor from office, and that this will have to be supported by a vote of two-thirds majority for it to pass. I would also like to inform you that the Lord Mayor or his advocate or expert of his choice shall be allowed to be heard in his defense to the motion moved by any of the authority councils. Thank you very much for going to my country. What's your name? we see that the judge at a certain point in time ruled that the authority can't sit to convene a meeting for the removal of the Lord Mayor when it's not fully constituted. One of the issues that I'm seeing, I'm seeing that the authority here is not fully constituted. Why? We don't have a deputy Lord Mayor. That's one. Two, the other issue is that this, this case, this, this report, was really too big and it needed time. It needed really a lot of time. And this matter is too much, too much delicate, not only for the councillors, but even the people of Kampala and the Constitution and the KCCA Act at large. Honorable Minister, we, we, we all know. Order. Honorable Minister, I'm rising on a point of order. My colleague is misleading this house, where the, actually she says, that this authority is not fully constituted. And of recent, and we have had even the, even the court ruling that the professional bodies were elected and therefore this August House is fully constituted. Therefore, to have to continue misleading, is it in order, Mr. Honorable Minister? Okay. I think let's rule, let's, let's rule on that one immediately. We are fully advised that this meeting is fully constituted we've taken full advice we've consulted the legal people and i am fully convinced that this meeting is fully constituted yeah. 
Honorable Minister for the Presidency and in charge of Kampa, and also chairperson of this important meeting this morning, uh, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, I, Becker Seramba Musige, hereby, I, Becker Seramba Musige, being a councillor representing Makinde constituency or Makinde division and a petitioner in the matter for the removal of the Lord Mayor do hereby move a motion for a resolution for the removal of His Worship Elias Rukwago Sarongo said by There is a motion moved by Councillor Serwanda. Yes, can we have order? First, have order yourself. Just have your order yourself. There is a motion moved. Okay, you you you, you don't you don't wish it away. So, is this motion seconded? Uh, thank you, Honourable Minister. I, Princess Ndebe Hawa, yes, Councillor, representing Rubaga North Constituency and also a petitioner in this matter for the removal of Lord Mayor Elias Rukwago, do hereby stand to second the motion for the resolution of the removal of His Worship Elias Rukwago. Can we have order? More. Yes. Can we have order? Resume your seat. Can you resume your seat? Yes. Just resume your seat. Yes. What? Your intention is to disrupt this meeting. Just go to your seat. There is a motion, members. There is a motion. Let's have order. There is a motion. A motion has been moved. Now, can this person be helped to take his seat? I won't allow deliberate in discipline cases to divert this meeting. Clerk, can this person resume his seat? Let's be orderly. Let's be orderly. So, honorable councillors. A motion has been moved. It has been seconded. Okay? So, mm -hmm. Honorable Minister, sir. My name is Achan Joyce Ondoga. I repeat. Can you respect the person holding the floor? Order, order to who? You move a point of order, somebody speaking. Yes. Honorable Minister, can I be protected? Can I be protected? Honorable Minister, sir. My name is Achan Joyce Sondoga. I am a member and councillor from this authority. I represent persons with disability. I represent persons with disability. And a petitioner in this matter. Honorable Minister, I support the motion for the removal of the Lord Mayor Rias Lukwago from his office, I beg to move. Uh, Honorable Minister and members of the authority, I, Adam Kasim Chaze, being a councillor of the authority, representing the youth and a petitioner in the matter for the removal of the Lord Mayor. I have read. I am the chairman of this meeting. I have read the findings of the tribunal. Just simply sit. Simply sit. Now, I am ordering the sergeant of this clerk to make... Can you resume your seat? Who is the clerk? Yes, yes. Yes. Move on. Move on. I, Adam Kasim Chazi, being a councillor of the authority, representing the youth and a petitioner in the matter of the removal of the Lord Mayor, I have read the findings of the tribunal, but the Lord Mayor has chosen not to appear and give us his defense. In this matter, in this matter, in this matter of the resolution of his removal, I'm sure, I'm sure my colleagues. Mr. Chairman, am I protected? 
in this matter, the Lord Mayor has chosen not to appear. Honorable councillors, it has come to my intention, it has come to my knowledge, let's have order. It has come to my knowledge that there are individuals who have come in here with a predetermined agenda to disrupt this meeting. I am therefore ordering the security of this to take rid of these characters. Please, 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 please. Security. Go on. Let's have order. Let's have order. As far as I am informed, there is no court order. This is just a. This character is simply wanting to interrupt the proceeding. I have directed the, the, the sergeant at arms to get rid of this indiscipline. Can we proceed with the meeting? Aye. Resume your seat. Resume your seat. You know how to, I will give you a point of stock. I will give you an opportunity to talk. Yes, at an opportune moment. He had the floor. I'm ready to 
find it of the tribunal. I read the findings of the tribunal, but the Lord Mayor has chosen not to appear and give defense to this matter. On this resolution for his removal, I'm sure my colleagues have had a similar opportunity to consider this matter. I therefore move that a motion for the removal of the Lord Mayor be put to a vote I so vote. Honorable Minister. Um, Prohan Garuhanga, Misha. The Council representing Chambogo institutions and the petitioner in the matter before this August House. I do stand to second the motion that we do take a vote on the issue of the resolution to remove the road mayor from office. I so move. Honorable Minister, I'm Chukonya Angela, a councillor representing Rubaga South. I second a motion for the removal of the road mayor to be put on the vote. I beg. There is a motion to put a motion to vote. There is a it's been seconded, so I want to give you an opportunity. This one. Sulaiman. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, Chairman, I raise up to make my point very clear. This is a process to impeach the Lord Mayor. And it started the way back. When we came here, under Section 12 of the KCC Act, the Lord Mayor is entitled to appear in person. That one we know very well. And if he doesn't appear in person, he's entitled to be represented in this meeting. I rose up to, uh, to, in, to inform this meeting that the rules of natural justice, at least it, it provides very clearly that such a human being, under such circumstances, can be heard. I was going to exactly do that after the motion. But, but, but the, even the motion is being moved to impeach him without being listened to. I and to I, I, I rose up to inform the chair and inform this house that that since the Lord Mayor is entitled to either appearance physically or being represented, can we first establish whether there's anyone in this particular room to represent him? As soon as I opened here, I recognized the Lord Mayor who visibly sees absent or called for his legal representative. Okay? As soon as the motion is moved, the Lord Mayor, before the fracas engineered by somebody here, I was going to call for the Lord Mayor or his legal representative. On this note, on this note, okay. may I call for the Lord Mayor or any of his legal representatives to stand up and speak on the motion. Chair. I won't allow any move to filibuster this process. Chair, we are moving up hazardly. You can't allow someone to defend himself after the motion has been moved on the floor, Chair. Chair the law is very clear. A mo unless a motion is moved, the Lord Mayor cannot speak in defense of... I have read the law very, very clearly. So are you his representative? Councillor Chidandara. No, that, that one I know. Who is the representative or his expert in this matter? We put you on record. No, my only problem is that, Chair, there's no you can begin representing someone after. More or less now, a judgment is being passed. So, are you uh, his uh, representative? The motion is already on the floor, Chair. Okay, resume your seat if you are unable. Thank you so much. The, the, the last thing, Mr. Chairman, I, I simply need my last clarification. Uh, before you, you have been presented with an interim order. Stopping this. There is no order. There is no order. That's a document that has no any authentication. It's just some orchestration of somebody. If I am presented with a court order, and I have verified it's a court order, I will comply with it. But as of now, I have no court order in my position. I want to make that clear. And do not mislead this council. And may you please resume your seat. And lastly, Chairman. By, by any stretch of imagination, Mr. Chairman. By any stretch of imagination. Why do you imagine? Why do you imagine? Why should you tell lies that I have been given a court order. Yet the document you are flashing here does not bear any authentication stamp. Why? What intention do you have? Why should I believe you anymore? 
Thank you, Honorable Minister. And I want also to reiterate on using the law. When you read section 1419 of KC Act 2010, it says, the Lord Mayor or the future Lord Mayor is entitled to appear in person and be heard during the proceedings of the authority relating to the motion for resolution under this section or to appear by an advocate or other expert of his or her choice. So I want to tell my colleague that this one has to take place after the motion has There is moved. a motion on the floor. Therefore, Lord, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Minister, sir, I assume a good representing Rwagade area 1. I want also to move a motion that for purposes of transparency, we vote on the motion for the revolution to remove Rias Rukwago, his worship, the Lord Mayor, from the office of the Lord Mayor, by show of hands. I beg to move. May I ask, may I ask, once again, it is visibly clear the Lord Mayor is not in the chambers. The law allows him to be represented either by himself physically or by a legal representative. May I ask if there is any legal representative of the Lord Mayor in this house who is ready to stand up and speak on the behalf of the Lord Mayor? Well aware that every party in this matter was summoned and was aware of this meeting, well, we will have to move on. It means the Lord Mayor Wilfrey chose not to be part of these proceedings. There is a motion on the floor that you would want to vote on it and that you want to vote on it by show of hands. So, those in favor of voting by show of hands, put up your hand first, and we know that. Can the clerk count that? Put those against voting by a show of hand, put up your hand. Those abstaining on, from this vote, so what are the results, Clark? 24, 4, and 4 again. 24 are for vote of show of hand, 4 are against the method of voting, and no abstention. So those 4. Uh, show of hands voting method, have it. <laughs> May you therefore, there is a motion for a so candidate that we vote on the motion moved by Councillor Serwamba to remove the Lord Mayor. Having not received any notification or defense of the Lord Mayor or his representative, I have no choice but to move to put that motion on vote. Clerk, conduct the vote. Those in favor of the motion that the Lord Mayor be removed from office, basing on the ground that establish a first case on him by the tribunal, put up your hand for everybody to see you and to be known. Where are where? that we need two thirds for the motion to pass. Put up straight your hands. And I hope the, the cameras for the authority are recording this exercise. So, those against the motion that the Lord may be removed from office, put up your hand for the record to capture you.
Those, those, order, 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 order. Those, is it abstaining or abstaining? Get up my English. Abstaining. That's the word. Those abstaining, but it depends on the pronunciation. Those abstaining from this vote, put up your hand. Record. So tell us the outcome of this process. Those abstaining, there's none. Against, three. Four, 29. Thank you, member. Thank you, clerk. Those that have voted for the motion are 29 councillors. Those that have voted against the motion for the removal of the Lord Mayor from office are four, three, my apologies, are three, yeah, three, zero, three. Those that have abstained from the vote are zero. The motion hereby passes. Next item is a request for five minutes so that we can work on the confirmation and signing of the record of the meeting. members I, I do not chair the authority meeting ordinarily I am I chair this meeting once in a blue moon as the circumstances dictate I will not come back here to convene another meeting to go through the minutes of this meeting so I would want them to flash our proceedings there and we confirm them okay but the motion for the removal of the Lord Mayor has passed and the law says that as soon as the motion to remove the Lord Mayor has passed by two-thirds majority. Two-thirds majority of this council is 24 on a higher side. So we've got 29 from this vote. Three are against. So the motion passes, and as the law says, the Lord Mayor ceases to hold office. Can we have, can we have the recordings? Flash there, so that we can know what we've gone through. difficult for management that you supervise to be the one to, to discipline you. You would rather establish a mechanism of your own. So these proceedings be put here so that after here nobody says that the minutes were tampered with. Yes. Read for us what they've captured. 
this, the proceedings have been really not lengthy, so they should have captured. Yeah. Honorable Minister, Honorable Councillors, in the minutes we captured the ministerial statement on the meeting of Authority for Bin for 25th November 2013. Thereafter, there were deliberation by the authority councillors. And then there was voting followed thereafter. The results were 29 for removal of the Lord Mayor and 3 against. Honorable Minister, members present were Honorable Minister Frank Tumwebaze, Technical Officers, Jess Semakura, the Executive Director, Charles Ouma, Julius Kabugo, Isaac Sempewa, and the councillors were Honorable Wanga Daudi for Central Division, Honorable Ntambaz Alfred, Honorable Tumwes Jemagret, Honorable Johnny Bogere Muanguzi, Honorable Janita Hamida Nasubuga, Honorable Madina Sereko, Honorable Rukwago Shifra, Honorable Suleiman Chidandara, Honorable Tumushabe Hope, Honorable Bernard Riga, Honorable Seruamba Baker, Honorable Mara Zahara Riga Sekibara, Honorable Moide Sara Naiga, Honorable Obstinja Elijah, Honorable Alan Sewanyana, Honorable Asimwe Godifre, Honorable Chigonya Angela, Honorable Namugeni Hawa Ndege, Honorable Rukwaya Henry, Honorable Mjuzi Joseph, Honorable Apollo Mugume, Honorable Adam Chibuka, Honorable Babidi Eme Katende, Honorable Kivalama Daria, Honorable Pialuanga Burhan. Councilor representing professional bodies present here, Honorable Van and Babazi, Honorable Nyawa Madison, Honorable Frank Anduho, Honorable Kaluma Kajina. Oh, uh, persons with disability were Honorable Joyce Odong, Achan, Honorable for the youth, Honorable Kasim Adam Chibuka, Chazze, Honorable Nakuya Aida, and absent with apology were Honorable Bumari Mpindi. Hey, on, on She's present. Hey, I'm going to make a correction. Yes. Honorable Councillors, does this reflect the record of the proceedings so far? Okay. And in your presence, I will sign this record. I want to thank you for turning up. I regret the fracas we've just gone through. I'm happy one of you has noted that you need to improve your conduct in council next time. I hope that you take it serious. What we've done here has been done in the open. The Lord Mayor or his representative was called to give his defense. However, the law gives the Lord Mayor 21 days to challenge the verdict of this uh, authority. So the law is fair to everybody. This is not the, the end of the world. At the same time, when we make enactments, we must be obliged to put them into practice whenever circumstances arise. Sometimes decisions have to be taken in a hard manner those who take them have to be demonized. But when duty calls, you must do that. Sometimes we don't have to look at these issues as personal matters, but rather we must oblige those instruments we have taken oath on and told the whole world will abide by. So I appeal to all of you to respect this legal process and to respect everybody who has a contrary opinion and to make sure we will guide you on the next course of action as the minister responsible for Kampala 
I know what I'm supposed to do under the law, and I will seek guidance from the Attorney General on the next course of action that I can appropriately guide you. Thank you so much. Meeting closed. As far as security is concerned, if you get any threat, please report to me. We shall deal with anybody who tries to joke around with your security. Lord Mayor, ye amaze okoma mirimo de duwe deyo kaka tugenda kushingana minister tulabe we forward tutambuze tye chibuga tugenda kuchira bila fitia tuchiyonja tutia na abantu bafwe okulaba nti badda yo munteko badda mu business zabwe tuchali nduka nduka lengera kuzenga nduka nduka kumirwa nganga message ya yono nende dala it shocked me to see that a council, an authority of 34 councillors, 29 out of 34, have voted for the removal of the Lord Mayor. And only three were against. I'm very happy with the outcome of the report. What Judge, Judge Bamgameri Catherine wrote or reported in, his, in her report was the right judgment because that is what I knew. It was about facts. It was not about politicking and lying about Lukwago. I was speaking the truth when I was giving my testimony. When he cross-examined me, he saw me that I gave out what I was thinking, what was in my head and what was right. It, those were facts and I think Judge Bamgame really saw it right that Lukwago should be removed from office. I'm very happy about the report. That one, as a mayor, it shocked me a great deal. Because if you have your authority meeting or your council meeting, you over 70% over of your members vote you out, it is a very big challenge. But what I must say is that uh, uh, we must definitely follow the law. I know my Lord Mayor uh, is a lawyer, and uh, what the minister is doing is also in the law, is following the Kampala Capital City Act. So as I talk now, law is at work. Uh, but this is not very new because uh, I had recently in Toronto, the mayor of Toronto was also voted out of office in a similar manner. So this is not only new in, uh, in Kampala or in Uganda, but has been also everywhere. What has also shocked me is to see members of the opposition, especially like one member even came with a drip on the hand 
and we are so dying to see to it that he comes to vote and votes this person out.